Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to comment on two issues. One, uh, in two minutes. In okay, two minutes, just on two statements. I'm not going outside what is happening. Don't worry. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of state of education, I, I think I want to appeal to university students. Uh, while they're expressing reservations on the university funding model, Mr. Speaker, I think it is important that the technical committee has been appointed. I want to appeal to students from universities to pr present and propose the university f uh, funding model for review, Mr. Speaker. I think as a way out and solution, we should revert to initial funding model of university where all of us were able to access higher education loan board across the country. So, Speaker, I condemn with the strongest terms possible the, the blajuning, the, 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 the attack against students of multimedia university yesterday by the police officers, Mr. Speaker. It was so embarrassing where we live in the country of rural law. But I have low opinion because the acting inspector general of police, Buana Masengeli, is a fugitive of justice. And that shows bad on the police. Mr. Speaker, I have been a victim of police brutality and harassment. I will not allow any other Kenyan to go through what I have undergone, Mr. Speaker. I was arrested naked on 14 April 2022 in my bed. Mr. Speaker, if I was at a certain age, Mr. Speaker, if I was at a certain age, if I was at a certain age, I would have cast those police officers, Mr. Speaker. If I was beyond 80 in my culture, Mr. Speaker, when you see, Mr. Speaker, when you see a person who's 80 years and above, I would have cast, and uh, Senator Lemonen would have understood, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of safety in schools, I want to pass my condolences, Mr. Speaker, to the in the Russia community, Mr. Madam, Mr. Senator Speaker. Ch the three gracious ladies are just yelling because you are less than the naked. I don't know what they saw missing. <laughs> Plus Mr. Speaker, would they want to see me naked? Can I table, they can see me in camera so that I can... Give him 30 seconds to conclude. Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, the gracious lady might have seen more machines than we are, that they want to see mine. You know some of our Kalenjin propellers are dangerous. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I want to, uh, to no, pass no, Senator my Chalegay. condolences. Senator Chalegay, what, is, what are you referring at? You no, they understood. Senator if you see the excitement Which of Senator Karen, he understands what a Kalenjin propeller is, Madam, Mr. Speaker. So in, on the issue of the Russia Academy, Mr. Speaker, I want to pass my condolences to the family, friends, and the community of Nyeri, Murima, Mr. Speaker, for the loss of 21 uh, students. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education should give us a proper guidelines on how school safety should be handled. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Including the, the statement hour, maybe I want to give Senator Koiti Andrew and one more member from this side, then we conclude that. Uh, uh, Mr. That Speaker, hour. sir. Thank you for the opportunity to address this house. I'll contribute to the statement on uh, our schools. The, main, the missing link or the elephant in the room is the way in which school inspectorate or the school inspectors have been sidelined. They have no budget, they are not operational. So even if we pass these beautiful laws and regulations, there's nobody to enforce them. So the, we need the education sector to go back to a system whereby they had a robust department of, in, of in, uh, school in, inspectors who could go around the schools like Senator Gloria did when she went to her former school and found that the grills were not well fixed so that they can... You didn't, clor, you didn't clarify that. You just said you went to your school and I don't know what. So we need the school inspectors to come back and begin enforcing these regulations that we are passed and laws that are passed by this house to ensure the safety of our children. Also, uh, apart from the school inspectors, we need to, uh, to look at these private schools and the public, the, the, the taxpayer must go back to funding and providing proper public education so that these private schools are not crowded. The idea that the government only collects taxes and provides no goods and services is anathema.
to the republican nature of this state. Thank you. This, but not the last, Senator Mutinda. The mic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And I want to start by sincerely giving my very uh, heartfelt, sincere condolences to the family and the, of uh, the parents of Edarasha uh, Primary School in Nyeri. But, Mr. Speaker, we have a tendency whereby we bring matters before this house. And what we do not address is the timeline for when these issues uh, uh, should be given uh, feedbacks. It is a high time that the Committee of Education that I believe will handle this matter to fasten and speed up because we await and then we find that other issues are still cropping up. It is a high time also the County Director of Education for Nyeri, where this uh, school is, should by now have given also uh, his statement or a report as to what really transpired. I want to thank our president, Dr. William, whom we saw the other day when he was in the County of Nyeri, actually just this last weekend. And he committed to ensuring that he's going to support the school coming back to his status. But as far as uh, my colleague Senator Mutata has mentioned, the inspectorate team should be able to give a report. It's one thing when funds are there, but what are the kind of standards that need to be adhered so that our kids are safe? We entrust our kids actually uh, uh, in these institutions. Uh, by, by the heads of these uh, particular learning institutions. Learning institutions at some point in this country have become a commercial business, not adhering to the required standards of the Ministry of Education. Uh, the other day we were even concerned in Nairobi, uh, uh, in the size of uh, Gidurai, where we have a primary school one, pre one classroom with over 80 students, yet the regulations are very clear that the maximum number should be up to 45. Kids are squeezed in there. Yet uh, uh, the, the, the ministry is there, the people are being paid each and every month to ensure that they partake their roles. Even if funds are not in place, but uh, the person in charge should be able to ensure that in whatever time before the school Okay, that is that. So next order. Order number eight, the County Government's Amendment Bill, Senate Bills number 39 of 2024, first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to amend the County Government's Act to provide for inter-county transfers of county public officers, the establishment of the County Public Service Board's consultative forum, and for connected purposes. Next order. Order number nine, the Labor Migration and Management number two bill, Senate bills number 42 of 2024. A bill for an act of parliament to provide for the legal first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to provide for the regulation of private employment agencies and the recruitment of workers within and outside Kenya, safeguard the rights and welfare of job seekers and migrant workers and for connected purposes. Next order. Order number, order number 10, motion. Alteration of the Senate calendar for part four for the that, of the third session. Uh, Senator Majority Rinda, move the motion. Mike, please. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move the motion on the alteration of the Senate calendar for part four of the third session, that notwithstanding the resolutions of the Senate made on the 15th of February, uh, 2024, on the approval of Senate calendar, and 19th of August, 2024, the alteration of the Senate calendar, pursuant to standing order number 32-4, the Senate resolves to further alter its calendar, regular sessions for the third session, 2024, in respect to part four to one, Continue with regular sittings until Thursday, the 31st of October 2024. Two, proceed for recess from 1st of November 2024. Three, resume regular sittings on Tuesday, 12th November 2024. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is a decision that we reached at the SPC, alive to the fact of the next motion, actually, which we shall be speaking 
uh, about in a few minutes, Mr. Speaker, of the Senate Machinani program, which, as you are aware, uh, Mr. Speaker, is scheduled to take next week in Busia. But because of other uh, exigencies of work, Mr. Speaker, and considerations that need to be made, we've had to reschedule it actually to the month of November. And uh, Mr. Speaker, that being the case, then it means we have to redo our calendar, as has been proposed uh, this afternoon, Mr. Speaker. This is a fairly straightforward matter, but there are two things that I'd wish to speak to. Uh, I didn't get a chance, Mr. Speaker, to speak when Senator, Moses, uh, uh, Senator Musa Faki uh, spoke uh, earlier on the need for members to show up in committee sittings. And I wish he had actually matched uh, his word with his action, Mr. Speaker, by staying in the chamber long enough. One of the biggest tragedies of this current Senate, Mr. Speaker, and I must say this with a very heavy heart, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that it is extremely empty on most afternoons, Mr. Speaker. I have never seen Parliament as empty as it is. Mr. Speaker, I am used to seeing a Senate where people debate, and not on points of orders, Mr. Speaker, on bills and legislation, Mr. Speaker. That practice has since long disappeared because people have become transactional. They come here, they issue statements, and disappear. In fact, Mr. Speaker, it's only that I don't want to name people, but I, if you see the number of people that bring statements to this house. Many afternoon, Mr. Speaker, they consider that to be legislative work. Then you wonder, who is going to process this statement, Mr. Speaker? If everybody was just to come, lay a statement, and disappear. Why do people fight so hard to be elected to come to this house, Mr. Speaker? Then leave your chairs to be empty. Mr. Speaker, we must also be serious as a legislature. I listen to people lament this afternoon, oh, this is not working, labor, I don't know education, I don't know the other. Mr. Speaker, begin first of all by transacting even that business in this house, Mr. Speaker. This is a premium platform, Mr. Speaker. Millions of Kenyans yearn for the opportunity to sit in the, legis in the legislature of their, of their republic, Mr. Speaker. I don't understand this new generation of legislators that we have in this current session, Mr. Speaker. That people show up at 2.30, and by 3.15, you cannot see them in the House. Mr. Speaker, I don't think that it is for lack of uh, things to do, Mr. Speaker, that you find many. Look at the experience, for example, Senator Oburu, the youth leader. He's serving his seventh uh, term in Parliament, Mr. Speaker. We have a speaker. point of order from Senator Andy Okech. Mr. Speaker, I rise understanding order number 22. And I hope on this one, I want to wish the majority leader the courage to be able to check point of order number 22. And point of order number 23, Mr. Speaker. I do empathize, and Mr. Speaker, because they are very long standing orders, allow me to speak to them without reading them because they are too long. And the reason why they are too long, Mr. Speaker, is because in this entire... St Mr. Speaker, can you, can, may, may you protect me from the noise the other side by Senator Chiragay, Mr. Speaker? Just protect me, Mr. Speaker. Because what, what the majority law is talking about here is very, very important, Mr. Speaker. And because it's important, Mr. Speaker, the point of orders number 22 and 23 are functional point of orders, Mr. Speaker. They are the... 